and I'm still adjusting my camera. Okay. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my basement workshop. Today I am going to walk you through the process of how I decide how big of a pot to put something new in. Uh, and this is something that I've never grown before, so I actually had to do some research. If we haven't met before, my name is Quincy Adams, and I want to help you grow some of your own food in a small space on a budget. Let's get started. And I'm going to adjust this one more time because this is a little bit off. Sorry. Okay. We're just going to have to roll with that because um, I had a little technical issue before this started. Okay. So what I've got here is cat mint, and I will hold it up to the camera so you guys can see it. This is just a little straggly, sad looking. It's actually two plants in a little part of a six part container. So this is in the mint family, but it is not catnip. Those are two different plants, but they're in the same family. So um, cat mint is, I will just explain to you why I, why I chose to buy it. And then I'll tell you what I researched to decide what kind of pot to put it in. And then we'll pot it up and I will give you a little tip on this pot and uh, why I need a screwdriver. Okay, so cat mint, it um, can be, there's different varieties that are smaller and some that are larger. Some varieties can get up to eight feet tall, but the one that I bought should only get up to three feet tall. They have purple flowers. It blooms in the summertime. It's deer resistant. It's hardy in zones three through eight. It's easy to propagate by either splitting or taking cuttings. It attracts bees and hummingbirds. It can handle poor soil and it's heat tolerant. So those are the reasons why I chose to buy cat knit, which is not cat knit. Um, and then I will tell you about how I decided which size pot to put this in. So um, I, start, I went to Google because that's where I start when I'm growing something for the first time. If I'm deciding whether or not I'm gonna buy it that I'm going to use search terms like how big does cat mint get? Get. How quickly does cat mint grow? Is cat mint invasive? Growing cat mint or how to grow cat mint? What kind of soil does cat mint like? So here's a little um, tip on one of those questions. Cat mint is in the mint family. Generally, plants in the mint family are invasive AF. So if you don't want to grow a ton of that, don't plant it in the ground. But they do very well in containers. Um, so, but attracting butter or bees and hummingbirds to my yard I, is something that I want because I want to have a lot of pollinators come to my yard. And I want to make sure that they're getting into the habit of coming to my yard before I have my vegetables out. Because what happened last year is I expanded my garden and there wasn't a whole lot of bees around and I didn't have anything to attract the bees to the, to my yard early because the lilies don't open up until, um, and I, they haven't opened up yet and it's almost mid May. But, um, so I didn't have anything to attract pollinators and I felt like that hindered the pollination and like the, the growth of my garden. So in order to get on top of that and improve the pollination of my garden for the next year, I decided to get more kinds of flowering um, plants that are attractive, specifically to bees. Uh, and this is just one of them. I've got others that I have not planted yet because I'm a hot mess gardener, but um, this is gonna go pretty, pretty fast and it's gonna start blooming soon. So those are the kinds of questions that you need to, to look at. My specific variety of cat mint where I got it, the website says that it should only get about three feet tall and it should spread about 24 inches. So for the first year, they're gonna be okay in a pot this size. I'm not sure what size pot this is. Uh, if it said, when I bought it, actually, this is, there is something on here. It just says eight inches, 20 centimeters. So um, it would require math to figure out what that is in gallons, which I will probably do later. But um, this is a good size pot for right now. If the cat mint gets really, really big and needs to be up potted before it later in the season, then I will do that. But for right now, I want to save my bigger pots for vegetables 
and use up as many, like reuse these. I've had this pop for at least five years and it's had tape on it several times. And as you can see, I never took the bottom off before. And what happened since I've been living here is we sometimes get a tremendous amount of rain, particularly in the springtime. And these pots come with the little trays that are on with these little, it's like a, almost like a little mini screw. See these little things? So these are pressed into the bottom of the pot. So there's holes in the pot. Um, and water can get through, a little bit of water can get through, but not a lot. So water can just sit in there and um, just keep the soil more, soil wet. And you don't want that. You want your plants to be able to drain. Most plants don't like to be sitting in water. Um, we call that wet feet. Most plants don't like that. So, and because I've had problems with this particular pot in the past, I got out a screwdriver. Um, I'm not sure if you can see these little tool marks in here, but I used the screwdriver to pry the bottom off before planting this so I can make sure that it's not locked in again. And what I will do is just set it off so it's not gonna settle all the way in there again. It'll be off a little bit, but that way I can check to the water in the bottom. And if there's too much water sitting in there, I can dump it out. And that way I can keep this plant from being flooded with water all the time. If we're getting a lot of rain, like we have been lately, the rain has been crazy. So when I have plants in these little, this was a six pack, I usually like to let it dry out a little bit so I can squeeze and it makes it easier to come out for them to come out. So I'm just pulling on one of these now that I've loosened it a little bit and the whole plug is going to come out and you can see that it is, it was root bound. So let's see, you see roots all the way down the side and a little on the bottom and there's a couple roots sticking off the bottom, but there's a lot of roots on the side of this. So it's got a good, nice root system, but it's just definitely, you see them coiled up across the bottom. This needs to go in a bigger container. So what I'm going to do, this pot is already full of dirt. I don't fill them all the way up to the tippy top. If it has a, if it's a plastic pot that's got like an inner rim, I usually fill it about to the inner rim. Uh, I like to leave room in my pots for um, mulch if I can, just because in the summertime it gets really hot. And I want to be able to keep them from drying out completely. There's either too much rain or there's too much sun and the pots get dried out. So with containers, particularly small ones, you have to wash them a little bit more often. I am going to gently pry this apart a little bit. So I'm not, ooh, you guys can't see that. You might be able to hear the ripping. I'm just gently loosening this up so the roots will grow out and do their thing. But I have not, so I've loosened it up a little bit. You can see the roots are sticking out a little bit, but they're not all crazy and I didn't yank this whole thing apart. And then I just I make a little hole in the soil. And then I set it in the pot. It's really hard. I'm going to have to figure out a better setup so you guys can see that better. But I, I put it in the hole and I'm planting it at the same level it was planted in and the little plastic cup. And then I'm pressing the whole thing down. And now my cat mint is planted and that's pretty much it let's see don't see any questions so if you guys don't have any questions I will let you go right there I will uh, just remind you guys that I'm going live on my business page now so if you want to share the video and thank you very much for everyone who shares 
Uh, you guys are superstars. Thank you so much. If you want to share the video, you have to share it from my business page, Lilies and Tomatoes. But I will continue to share the video out onto my my personal page and into my group. And um, also, the videos are slowly being uploaded. I'm not archiving the videos on my business page. I am putting them up on YouTube. So if you want to check out any of these videos on YouTube, the channel is called Lilies and Tomatoes there as well. And uh, I've got the first week or two weeks worth of videos that I did, most of them up so far. So I will be doing a blog post to go with each video, putting the blog on my blog which is also called it's Lilies and Tomatoes. It's liliesandtomatoes.com. And you guys can see my little logo off in the corner. And um, so then from now, the blog with the embedded YouTube video will be on my blog page. The, YouTube, the videos will be up on YouTube. And then I will be, the live videos will be continuing three days a week on my business page. So three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Pacific, and Saturdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. That's all I have for now. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, including dog moms, because I'm a dog mom. And uh, stay safe, wash your hands, and have a good day. Bye!